God more than you can deserve. You think about all that that blood washed away and cleansed on that cross of Calvary. When you really think about it, you think about how good God has been to you, you know what it is. It's power to really just forgive anybody. If you think about anything that somebody does to you, you really can think about the blood of Jesus Christ and what the blood has done in your life. And you can absolutely uh, uh, repent the sins of the living and absolutely have a heart to go forward in the things of Almighty God. We're going to turn the page. What's that to We're going to sing that song. He abides. Welcome to our worship service, 
Amen. We're located at 334 Astro Street. So come on in. Uh, we, we'll be gathering. Our next service will be here Sunday morning at 11 a.m. So come out, come out, and be with us at 11 a.m. Let's come and have a great, great turnout this weekend as unto the Lord. And come bring your friends and family. My children's church teachers back. Amen. She's back in the house of the Lord, and so we're looking forward to it. I know the kids will be glad that the children's church is back, and so we are, we're thankful for all God's doing. I, the other day, one of the little girls, she said, hey, it was a great children's church the other day. And no doubt she was, she said, man, it was an awesome children's church. The little kids were happy, and no doubt, and you know, that's the way it should be. Amen. The kids come and enjoy, hear the word of God, and come and receive. So we encourage you to bring your children. Bring your children to the children's church this Sunday at 11 a.m. in the house of the Lord. Amen. So let's come and, and, and look for what God's going to do on this weekend. Amen. This time we're going to receive an offering tonight. That's a low have Come on back. Come on back. Amen. So uh, again, we were trying to just do a transition there. Amen. So I was thinking about that the other day. So let me uh, start doing transitions here. But we thank God for, again, the God who is a God, again, that's able to bless us and keep us in motive. Amen. And if give us unto the Lord, watch him truly bless you. As you give and continue to support the work of the Lord here, uh, you probably see up there on the screen uh, the ways of giving, uh, the text to give, 347 229 Zelle, and through the website as well. So uh, come and give chances unto the Lord. Give your offering the title unto the Lord and watch God bless you. And in the light of the Reverend, feel free, please. Amen. Father God, Lord, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love, for your power. And we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be, to be able to give you a portion of that which you've given us. We ask you right now to bless both the gift and the giver. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, right on. <laughs> family in Burbis 1 would have been sick. Uh, we pray for Brother Carlos, amen, who had a successful surgery today. Pray for um, uh, my uncle continually. Uh, they had a, he had a successful surgery today as well. Amen. And we uh, I thank God I got reports that he's down fighting in the hospital, so we know he's almost back. So we continue to pray for him. Fighting meaning he's fighting the nurses, and that's a good thing, knowing y'all, my uncle. So we continue to pray for them, and pray for the folks down in, in, in Florida as well. Down in Florida, we pray those that are be recovering from the the hurricane there and, and uh, our prayers and thoughts are there with them. We have family down there. Some of you may have family as well. And so we continue to lift them up in prayer that the Lord will uh, help them recover and thank God for, again, uh, those that life will spare. Amen. Amen. This song is called, Lord, You Are Mighty. Amen. Truly, He is a mighty God today. Lord, you are mighty. What a mighty God we serve, church, here today. Truly, truly, he is a mighty God. Amen. As we worship him, Paul says, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord mighty, 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 the earth, you set your glories above the heavens and the earth. 
When I think of all you made, the sun, the moon, and the stars, no praise is high enough to express just who you are. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before the mighty God that we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we Heaven and earth adore the mighty God we serve. Lord, your mighty, 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 Lord, your mighty. Lord the mighty, Lord your name in all the earth. Uh, you set your glory above the heavens and the earth. The sun, the moon, and the stars. No praise is high enough to express this praise you are. How I many know he's mighty tonight, church? So we sing it with us tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, hallelujah, all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, all the praise, hallelujah, uh, hallelujah, uh, hallelujah, uh, hallelujah, all the glory, all the honor. All the praise, all the praise, all the praise, to the mighty God we serve, mighty God we serve, angels bow before the mighty God we serve. I know he's a mighty God tonight. Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord, What a mighty God we 
Thank God tonight. What a mighty God that he is, church. Amen. Truly the awesome God. Give him praise tonight. Amen. Is he mighty to you? Praise the Lord tonight. Give him glory. Give him honor. Amen. He's a mighty, mighty God. Truly, truly, truly grateful to be here tonight. Give him praise offer tonight. Give him praise tonight. Amen. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord tonight. that praise him. Don't watch me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give him glory tonight. Give him praise and honor. Amen. He is so due. He is so due tonight. Amen. What a mighty God that we serve. Amen. Amen. Don't come and be a spectator. Amen. Come and worship God. Amen. 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 We live in a day and age where people become spectators. Amen. Spectators on the sideline. We appreciate each one online, but come on back to the house of the Lord. Don't be a spectator, amen. Come on in the house of the Lord and worship God. Nothing like it, amen. Nothing like worshiping him and praising him, amen. Truly, God is a good God, amen. Uh, we like and say thank you for your giving tonight. May the Lord truly bless you is our prayer. Looking forward to a conference next week, too. We have a conference coming up this Monday night, amen, in Missouri. Looking forward to going and, and be uh, getting blessed by Almighty God. The theme is let's do this, amen. Let's do this, amen. Uh, Again, as we continue to serve God and live for God, doing the work of God and continue until his return. So we look forward to that. So be in prayer again for the conference this week. And say, preacher, what is conference again? It's an assembling of ourselves together where we go and meet there in the national campground there in uh, Santa Fe, right area of Missouri. Probably about, uh, I guess, two hours from an hour and a half. Depends on how fast you drive. How's that? Again, uh, outside of St. Louis. And so we're looking forward to what God's going to do. It's churches from all over the nation. Uh, and some from overseas that get a chance to come. Hey, man, I'm in my first conference. I was stationed overseas and traveled all the way to New York, uh, to, to, to the United States to go to this conference. Hey, Amen. My first conference. Hey, man, I won't tell you the rest. Hey, Amen. Again, I, 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 I just one of one, another one of them stories where I'm very fortunate to be alive. How's that, Sister Whitlock? Got to have Sister Whitlock back in service with it. I shared a story with him another day, Sister Whitlock. One of them, uh, I'm fortunate to be alive stories. And so uh, that's another. I have to tell that one on another day. How's that? Amen? Amen. We're thankful tonight. So be, be prepared with us for the conference. And so you get a chance to go. Come on now and be with us. Uh, and one of the ones in the future. And so we look forward to what God's going to do. Amen. I want to come out of the book of Romans. Romans tonight. The book of Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Here in the word of God. Much better. Much better. Romans chapter 8. That thing, boy. It's like a, a can there. But uh, Romans chapter 8. Uh uh, verses 35 through 39 we'll pick up and then I'll give you the second text here the Bible says who shall separate us from the love of Christ he says shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are counted as sheep for the slaughter number 37 he says but nay in all things, these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. In verse 38, he says, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depths, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And I want to focus back in on verses uh, 38 there. The Bible says, uh, I am persuaded neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principality, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Is what we're going to focus, things to come. And he went on and says, shall separate us from the love of God. Then I want to jump down to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 here. And Jesus was speaking. Uh, it's really from uh, one of the areas where we, uh, the Beatitudes, Sermon on the Mount. And the Bible says, therefore, in verse 31, he says, therefore, take no thought. Or saying, uh, or saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all things. Number 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. 
Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow I shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is evil thereof. And so for a little bit today, we want to uh, join those two together and do part 14B on this one. 14B, how's that? We did 14A a few weeks ago. Complete victory over things to come. Complete victory over things to come. Reverend, if open us in prayer, please. Amen. Things to come, we uh, opened up, and we've been, again, part of those who just joined us, first-time uh, viewers or whatever the case may be. Again, we, it's part of a 17-part series, so you are now in part 14B. Amen. And for, uh, we've been going through every one of these uh, uh, pieces of, of Scripture from Romans chapter 8. Uh, one of really one of the uh, popular or, or really favorites, my Romans chapter 8, and it goes through a lot of things, the, again, about... Uh, again, the Christian race and on and on and on and how to be victorious in your life. And so we've been going through 17 parts of this thing. And uh, again, and so we, we look at this and from a uh, series, uh, throughout the series, we, we've highlighted each section, each one of the uh, list of 17 from whether it was famine or persecution or things, peril or storm. And so here we, 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 we are at the place of things to come. We serve a God that knows the future tonight. A God that holds the future in his hands. And, and really, the last two Sundays ago, we begin to deal with the, the prophetic side of things to come. Prophetic things to come. And we share with you some things, again, what Jesus had told us, because people want to know about the end time and on and on and on. The end time, and, and naturally, Jesus has many, many uh, passages of Scripture, the Word of God throughout the New Testament. And even in the Old Testament, it tells you about things to come. It's the only book that can tell you past, present, and future. Amen. And it's all true tonight. Amen. Past, present, and future, it's all true. And, and, and it's, it's, it, you will be very foolish, a very, 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 uh, uh, um, uh, not a wise man or woman, and really just off your rocker if you miss heaven tonight. If you miss heaven because God has already told us the playbook. God has already told us how things will play out. God has already told us the future. Amen. Amen. Oftentimes you want to say, oh, if I knew the future, preacher, I'll play the numbers and I'll be a multi-billionaire tonight. No, Christians don't play the numbers, amen? Christians don't end up in gambling at the gambling hall, amen? Amen, man. On and on and on. If I knew the future preacher, I could put all my money on that ball game tonight. I would have predicted that uh, my man would hit the home run last night. I would have been a rich man because on that game last night, uh, again, congratulations to the man, Aaron Judge, amen, for him being, becoming the uh, home run king, tying the home run king now, they call it. Home run king because the other one was fake and phony. It's a debate about that. Barry Bonds and steroids. The devil always has various things. We we'll, we'll leave it alone. And so it's a lot of within that. So naturally, they, they congratulate that. But even out, out of all the home runs, Mr. Judge, as you're watching this thing tonight, hey amen. My, my, I encourage you to get saved, hey amen, if you're not saved already. But you look at this tonight the future, and God holds the future. God holds the future, and really, again, it would be unwise for men to, to, to uh, disregard this book. Disregard this book. You see things happen in our world, and, and people always say, oh, you see the Bible's coming to life, and on and on and on. So people know that the Word of God is true. They know it's true. And, uh, there are prophecies that God gave, uh, again, whether it's in time. And there's one that we preached a couple of months ago. I go back and look at it on, uh, on Facebook or YouTube channel. There, uh, it says here that uh, we have been mandated as well to die. We have been mandated today. We were dealing with the mandated, I guess it was last year now. And they, uh, we said one thing, one that God has mandated this one thing. He says it's appointed the man wants to die. And after this, the judgment. Amen. And so we begin to see how the things to come, are we preparing for our death? Are you preparing for eternal life? Are you ready to no doubt lose your soul or, or either enter into eternal life with Jesus Christ? And we pray tonight that that will be your des destination is to spend eternity with Jesus tonight. What's to come? Amen. And so we see prophecies about preparing to die or what's to come, bracing yourself. And our storms, again, we're told, as we share with you about Hurricane Ian, about how did they say that they prepare to brace themselves, board the windows up. The storm is coming. The storm is coming. Get sandbags. Get all these different things because the storm is coming. Jesus even said they can predict the weather, but they can't see that Jesus 
my return. They can't even, uh, again, wrap their mind. They predict the weather. They know about this and the other. He said, but they cannot see me. And so we see it and I am. And so people will brace themselves for the carnal. They'll brace themselves, again, uh, uh, to guard, again, for preparation for emergency. Or they'll prepare themselves mentally and physically for getting older. Again, and so we see all these different things. And many women will prepare themselves. I'm going to prepare myself financially. Yes, we do all these things. We encourage you to save money. We encourage you to, no doubt, build up your bank account. All these different things. But you know, at the end of the day, how is your soul? Amen. And so we begin to see as a child begins you think about preparing as a child young child he prepares for life and no doubt in his mind he begins to say you know when I grow up I'm going to be this so she grows up I'm going to be this and that and the other and so they begin to make preparations it's, it's sad to see how again in our society though some parents would tear them down we were looking at something that night people would tear people down kill their dreams kill dreams in people's lives I want to go up and be the uh, uh, a brain surgeon boy you'll never do that you live in the projects you ain't getting out of the projects and they will kill their dreams. And so that child will grow up with a, with a mentality that I can never do it again. And so his preparation, and they won't prepare or, or, or for that boy or get a girl to prepare for life. And it becomes a vicious cycle every day. But we talk about preparation. So even after that, the, the, their mind may be shattered. Or after graduation, again in the day, I'll be, we prepare for various things. But after I graduate high school, what will I do next? Or again, I'll, I'll prepare for a job and a career. Uh, again, I'll eventually get married and have children and be prepared. All these preparations for things in life. Uh, things to come in their lives. Again, we said financial savings, uh, 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 buying homes, and all these different things. Uh, before you long, your teens become 20s. How I many know that? Your teens become 20s. I was talking with a man the other day, uh, uh, Jimmy, brother Jimmy, and uh, he, uh, he was like, how's that little boy? I said, what little boy? I'm talking about my nephew. And I said, he said, how old is he now? I said, I think he's 10. He said, 10 already? I said, yeah. Because we, we, we had him when he was first born for a couple of months, my wife and I. And naturally, all the family began to love upon him and all these different things. We kept him for several months while his mama was away, deployed. And, and so, but now he's a 10-year-old boy. 10-year-old boys become 20-year-old boys, men, amen. And 20-year-old girls, and, and before long, 30-year-olds and 40-year-olds, again, but them 40s come along quick, folks. You young right now, it'll come along quick, don't it? And so you look at these things and how preparation, and we know that we need to prepare throughout Scripture. It tells us these things. Again, and we read it, we share with you before, preaches the message about get the house in order, or, or Noah was told to prepare the ark because it was going to rain. Moses was told to tell the people to put the blood on the doorpost. Why? Because death is coming, and on and on and on. And he began to tell them all these different things. God is a God of love that will prepare men and women's hearts to get ready. People take it as a judgment message. It's not a judgment message. God is trying to prepare people's hearts. I'll be your worst enemy. I don't tell you the truth to get ready and get right with God. Amen. I'll be your worst enemy. Jesus' message to the people and even John the Baptist. Well, John was the forerunner. He was the preparer of the way. He said, prepare you the way. Prepare, no doubt. Make his path straight. And he said, repent of your sins. He was preparing the people. Amen. And so he was preparing for things to come. Jesus came. He said the same thing. Repent. You must be born again. Why? Because life is beyond what we see right now. He said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, or the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's nearer than we first believe. Scripture tells us as well. And so the night coming, Jesus told us as he uh, went throughout his ministry, he began to tell them, he said, the night coming when no man can work. And so we, again, can, must take advantage of our time and prepare and no doubt work and work. He says, because the night will come when nobody can work. Jesus prepared them for the things even the church would face, the battles, the attacks. Throughout the word of God, it continues to prepare many women. Nothing, again, is strange that we see in our day and age today as it plays out today. It shouldn't be strange to the believer. It shouldn't be strange as we see things happening in our world because, again, we know that the Bible and the word of God has to come to pass. Amen. The Bible says it should not catch the church as a thief. He said, I'm coming as a thief. But he says, but if we're watching and praying, if we're watching and beginning to look for the thing for the Lord and, and longing and yearning for the coming of the Lord, young and longing and yearning to see Jesus one day, to spend eternity and base your life around that every day, it won't catch you sleeping. It won't catch you slipping off into the night. Amen. Risking your soul. Because why? You, your mind has stayed on him. Amen. It won't find us getting drunk in the bar room. Why? Because my mind has stayed on him. Amen. Because you know what? Again, we're looking forward to a place 
where Jesus dwells today. And to some, it's strange. Again, again, it may seem strange to some. But again, why, why we worship, why we praise God? Because we yearn for our coming king. Amen. The world has no hope, brothers and sisters, today. Amen. And without Christ. Without Christ, he says, we're most men miserable. We're lost without Jesus today. I'm trying to tell you to come to Christ, which says I turn to hope. Again, I hope in God. I hope in Christ. All the stocks and bonds on Wall Street, my friend, today, it, it will fade away. I'm sharing with a man the other day. Are you talking with me, actually? He said, man, all I'm seeing right now is red, 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 red. <laughs> talking about his stocks. It's bad. It, it cut in half almost. He said, I pulled my money out the, out the thing. I put it back in the bank. Because the ebbs and flow uncertainty of life. But there's one thing that's certain tonight, and that's Jesus Christ, my friend. The solid rock of ages, and that's the one we can depend on. And that's why he says it today, again, to, to worship God and live for God every day. And we see that we should not think that these things are strange. Jesus gave us some more examples of how the things that come. Look, pull up Matthew 24 for me. Matthew 24 tells this in 12. I'm not going to go to, hold on, I just want to pull this out. He says, because of iniquity shall abound. Iniquity shall abound unlawful and wicked world that we live in shall abound. He said, the love of many will wax cold. He said, but he that it shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. We're talking about endure. We endure and enjoy. Amen. Enjoy the ride. He said, uh, he said, iniquity will abound in our world. I'm working at a place right now. We pray for our youth. Pray for our youth. Go back to verse 12. Uh, we pray for you, please. And so, Working at a place, a juvenile detention center. And that's just sad to see all those young people in there, those young men in there. And uh, and, and you think about it, how that, but I, the point I want to bring up is this. Right outside, it's a big old jail <laughs> where I'm working at. But right outside is a bunch of heroin addicts shooting up in front of the jail. That's crazy. And I thought about that. I said, man, ain't nothing but everyone I thought about said, people, they probably asking for help. Lock me up, please. Get me off of these streets. They probably yearning in the only way they know I, I said, man, it's pretty bold. At the same time, I thought about how the, the world of iniquity where sin, anything goes and matters. Texas to uh, uh, Reverend Kevin Day, he was asking, uh, uh, he was saying, what's going on in New York City? And I began to tell him, I said, hey, uh, as long as every, anything, everything goes on in this city because we pass ungodly laws unrighteousness and so again so out there in front of the prison house right around the corner you got needles all over the place and really tells my heart said man we got to really witness to these folks up in the Bronx and so it was this and, and I thought about it said but you know what my co-workers now just say but you know what right around the corner they can legally shoot up no questions asked they're supplied they, they don't ask where the drugs came from you can just come in here Get your, get your high and free needles. And I said, you're encouraging it. You are encouraging it. You are encouraging it. And I, again, sin and so because iniquity will abound. Iniquity is abounding all over the place. Everywhere you walk, you can't even, you got to hold your breath because weed is all over the sky and all over the place because iniquity will abound. Amen. And, and really we see sin and ungodly laws and, and sinful ways in our world today. Again, it's, it's, it's serious business and we see Jesus already told us things to come. He said, iniquity shall abound and the love of many will wax cold. And so we find again a love for people. And so it's, all, you, it's easy just to turn the naked eye, but I say, I can't. I, I got to reach out to these men. Give them a church card or something. Let them know that Jesus loves them. God help them. Why? Because we can't wax cold to what's going on in our world today. The Bible says we warn men. We see many. We see that they're approaching. He says we must pull them out of the fire while there's still time tonight. While there's still an opportunity, no doubt, for men to be saved. We must reach in and pull them out of the fire, wherever you may be. Amen. Wherever you go, somebody can hear about the Lord. Amen. The Bible says, but the love of many, many will wax cold in the last days. And so we think about waxing cold as a church, waxing cold as a world. The world is already cold, but can you imagine the church getting cold? It's even worse. The church gets cold, not the temperature in the room. Thank God for the heat. But you know what? The church gets cold as well. 
The curse got cold. The Bible says in Revelation, he says in that church, he said, I wish it was either hot or cold. He said, and being lukewarm, he's going to spew you out. He's going to spew you out if you're cold as well. But you know what? Again, the love of many will wax cold. The love, again, and we find in our world, where's the love? If we can't find it in the church. Where can we find it? Amen. And so even in the last day, Jesus warned us. And so let's go. Remove the John for me. John chapter 9. Back, I just quoted already, but he said, I must work the works of him that sent me. He said, while the, night, the day is night coming when no man can work, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. And so we think about this. Jesus is that light tonight. There's still a light of hope tonight. There's still a light, no doubt, to where the light is still on here in the church. On this wonderful night, as we came in, it was getting dark. I said, man, it's going to get dark quicker. But you know what? The light is on tonight. The lighthouse is still on Ashford Street tonight, and we continue to let you know tonight that Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is still the hope of the world. Jesus is still the answer to lives and our future tonight. The future is wrapped around in Christ tonight. I saw a thing the other day. Stupid. <laughs> Muslims. It was posted up there. I think it was fair because I had it up there on his wall. And it says, uh, Armageddon's coming. Who will win, Allah or, or, or the Christian? I say, man, y'all... y'all that's foolishness. Y'all already, already know who's going to win. We already know. Uh, which God would you rather have? The God of the Christian or the God of, of Islam? And so naturally we want the God of Christ because Jesus is victorious tonight. And there's complete victory in Jesus Christ. Come on over to the winning side. Come to Christ now. You can have victory in your life. You can have victory in joy and, and satisfaction in your heart and your mind and your soul tonight. There's victory in Christ tonight. He gives you victory over sin. gives you victory over a, a, a shame and, and, and ungodliness ways. And he gives you victory over depression and anxiety. He will give you victory in every aspect of your life. And that's when things do come your way. You'll be able to overcome it because Christ gives victory. The Bible says here, uh, uh, he says, I must work the work. But let me go back to our text here in, in, in the Gospel of Matthew as well, chapter 6. We were trying to wrap this up tonight. The Bible says, and really that second part of the message about taking no thought for tomorrow, Jesus was there and really came uh, shortly before the Beatitudes. I remember in Bible school, Reverend Fausto asked this question. He says, hey, we're going we to go over the Beatitudes. I never really heard it this way. He said, what be your attitude? <laughs> what be your attitude? He said, blessed is the man that hungers and thirsts after righteousness. We read this. And blessed is the poor uh, in spirit for no doubt they shall see the kingdom of God. On and on and on. And so uh, just jump down to number, uh, uh, chapter 19, verse 6, 619. Uh, uh, Jesus continued to preach on that mount there. And the Bible says, lay up yourselves, lay not up yourselves treasures upon the earth. Where moth and rust does corrupt, where thieves break through and steal. And verse 20 says, Lay up yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust uh, doth corrupt, nor thieves can do not break through and steal, my friend and I am. And so the ebbs and flows of life, uh, if you lose it all, you still have Christ. No doubt, if we have little or have a lot, you know it, uh, it does not matter because I have Jesus in my heart and my soul. And that should be your prayer as well. That's where our victory lies. That's where our joy and satisfaction comes from, through the salvation and through the power of the Holy Ghost tonight. So he says these things that men is putting their, their stock in bond and all that they're waiting to in their lives. He says these things will fall apart. Waxing the vehicle and uh, shining up the house by our buy bigger barns. They didn't prepare for the future. The man said thou fool today your soul is required of you. And it may not be today it could be tomorrow. Amen, but prepare for what's to come. The Bible says in verse 21, he says, at number 22, he says, The light of the body is the eye. If therefore the eye be single and the whole body full of light, he said, but if the eye be evil and the whole body full of uh, darkness, he said, if therefore the light that is to in thee be d darkness, he said, how great is that darkness. And he went on concerning the eye and what we view and how we live our lives. And even, again, Jesus said, if your eyes even pluck that thing out, Get rid of it. No, no, let me get right in. Let me examine myself. Let me, let me do the things in which I need to do. Verse 24, but it says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or else uh, uh, will hold to one and despise the other. He will despise the other. He says, Ye cannot serve God and mammon. That's coming a day. And I pray tonight if you're not saved, today will be your day to make that choice. Today will be that day. You say, You know, I'm going to make that choice. 
should change the trajectory of my future. My future, I wanted to be in Jesus. Mammon will fade away. He said, but I'm going to serve God. Number 25, when it says, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. He says, what you shall eat or what you shall drink. For, what, for yet your body, what you shall put on. He said, is not life more than me and the body more than raiment? He began to get them to cherish the most valuable thing, their relationship with him, their soul, their, their, their lives. And he went on a little bit further because, again, what is to come? People lose everything. They feel like they lost it all. Job is a perfect example. That's why God put it in the Bible. He lost his wife. He lost, uh, not wife, he lost his children. He lost so much health or wealth. But you know what? He didn't lose God up in heaven. And God, as he stayed faithful, and she, uh, as we stay faithful, you and I, to God, no doubt God will turn it around. God will turn it around. And the Bible says God blessed Job with twice as much as he had before. Why? Because, again, he, he, he kept his mind on him, and he kept his eyes on Jesus. And my friend, they, whoever you are, man, woman, boy, girl, keep your eyes on Jesus. The Bible says don't take thought of the things that you have or don't have, because God will supply everything. He said, Behold the fowls of the air. For they sow not, nor do they reap, nor do they gather barns, yet my heavenly, my heavenly Father feedeth them. He says, God will take care of the future. God will take care of everything that we go through. We worry about tomorrow. We pull our hair about tomorrow. We worry about how things will play out. We worry about all these different things. But we learn and we see from the word of God, God will take care of it. It's in God's hands tonight. Your life, your future, again, your, your plans, your household, your, your career, whatever it is, put it in God's hand. He says, take no thought about it. Just give it over to God. Give it over to God and listen to his voice. Let him follow, follow his plan, follow his blueprint. I'm telling you, God's blueprint works, doesn't it? God's blueprint works. And so he says, the future, prepare for things to come. He said, God has it all in control as you follow me. As we follow the Father up in heaven. He said, my father will feed you, whether it's spiritually, he'll feed you. You continue to read the word of God, stay in church, continue to be fed by the things of God. God will give you things, amen, that will keep you going every day. How many can I get a witness in time? No doubt he'll keep you going every day. Say, man, I needed to read that. I needed to hear that. I, I needed that. Why? Because it continues to feed my soul. Like it continues. We can go without food. Amen. We can go without food. We see for days and days on hand. But we cannot go without the word of God. We need God. The Bible says, and yet not much better than they. We are not. He asks this question, are we not better than they? All these things. God, we are his greatest, greatest creation, mankind. God made us in his image. Amen. And he wants to spend the future with him, the rest of our days, with the Lord forevermore. As we wrap this up, come on up, please. The Bible says, which of you taking a, a thought can add one cubit to a statue? Nobody can. I know they got plastic surgery nowadays. They got plastic surgery nowadays. They adding and taking away and puffing up and puffing down. All these different things sucking in and sucking out. But really he was saying, you know what? God made you. No doubt God can take care of you as well. God, no, no greater one. I remember uh, we, uh, we bought the car, what, six years ago? Now time is flying, boy. We bought the truck in 2016, man. And uh, my wife said, you know what? Nope, we're going to take the car to the dealership. I said, girl, don't you know how much expense it is? But she was right. Because you'll take it to uh, Joe on the corner. <laughs> Joe on the corner having, uh, you know what I'm saying? He'll have it all jacked up by the time you leave. Joe, I thought you, yeah, yeah, I fixed that. And he forgot the screw. One time I went to the man, he had screws all still up in the thing. I was like, man, you ain't put this stuff back together. Oh, I don't worry about that screw. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. Because why? Because people. Again, these things, we must go back to our manufacturer. People, we must go to our manufacturer tonight. We must go to God. He's our creator today. And so naturally, it, it, no doubt, it will cost us. What is it going to cost you? It's going to cost you your life. Sometimes going to the dealership, it costs an arm and a leg. I mean, <laughs> but you know what, Jesus? Take me to the manufacturer if it costs me. But you know what? I just wanted to fix. You know what's best for me. 
you know what's best for my future. And they, I like it how they say, you know, in 10,000 miles, you got to do this. In 5,000, 5, uh, 50,000 miles, you got to do this. 70,000 miles, we don't always do it, but we should anyway. But you know what? You know what? And God, God has a blueprint laid out for us because the manufacturer knows what's best. Uh, we change this. We need to change this oil over. This oil is very dirty. We flush that thing out. You need to transmission fluid to replay. Uh, all these different things. Why? Because the, the manufacturer knows the best about us. So naturally we change, continue to change and grow in God. He says here we go back to our manufacturer, the one who's creator. He says, you're the potter and I'm the clay. He says, why well, take thought for the raiments? Consider the lilies. He went on and said, how they grow. They toil not. Neither do they spin. Amen. Amen. God take care of them. We ain't have to do nothing. Sometimes I wish God wouldn't take care of them <laughs> out here in the yard. Because it grows up, they grow because God takes care of it. The future, you can cut it down. Man, we cut that thing down. Two years ago, I think we sprayed weed. I said, I'm going to spray grass killer everywhere. So we ain't got to cut this thing no more. <laughs> Try to kill all the grass, all the weeds. But lo, lo and behold, before long, that thing will pop back up. Amen. And the devil will try to kill you and I. He'll try to cut you down. Take you down to nothing. But you know what? Before long, God, he said, I'll take care of the lilies. I can take care of you. I'll take care of you. Amen. In church of the day, God is able to do this. Let's move on a little bit further. Back to our text is where we were at. Amen. Therefore, take no thought. What shall what you shall eat, what you shall drink, whether with soever you shall be clothed. He says, for after these things do the Gentiles seek for your heavenly father, know the need that you have. God sees your need. God sees your future. God has a plan for each of our lives. He said, I know the plans for you. I know the plans that I have for you. It's already been written out. No doubt. He says, seek me. Seek first the kingdom. First things first, let me see what God says. Let me see what he wants for me. In your morning, let me seek you first. God, before my feet hit the ground, God, thank you for this day. Guide me today. Order my steps on the train, on the bus. God, crack my day today. Seek first the kingdom of God. I'm going to do this, that, and the other today. You know what? Let's seek God first. And let God control, lead us, and guide us in his righteousness. Seek first the kingdom and the things of God. Enter to the throne of God. God, what will you have me do today? What will you have me do? What can I do for you, God? Amen. What can I do for you? Church today, his righteousness, God, if there's anything displeasing, I don't want to go another day. God, not right with you. Cleanse me, wash me, forgive me. Let me make it whole. Let me get my thought pattern right. Let me get my mind right. Let me make that right, God. I just want to do what's right in your eyes, Lord. So my future can be blessed. That's why he said it. He wants our future to be blessed. I mean, know that. He wants our future to be blessed. Uh, again, why? People say, oh, uh, this, that, and the other do. Uh, God is trying to keep you under control. No, he's trying to bless you. To keep you out of trouble. Trying to keep you off the streets. Trying to keep us out of the juvenile center. Pray for them young men. Lord, when I get a chance to go one more day over there tomorrow. Talk to some of those men on the street. Let them know Jesus loves them. Give a men and women a chance to make, to make the right choice. To make the right road. You're at a fork in the road where we say it today. We're at a place in history. You're at a place in your life where it's time for me to make the right choice. It's time for me at the fork in this road. What am I going to do? Am I going to go to the left? Am I going to go to the right? Thank God for forks where God gives us options. He says, choose you. No doubt all the decisions we can make, let's make the God our decision. Let me make the right choice. Let me pick the right path. Let me walk uprightly before you. And the Bible says, all these things shall be added to you. The man of the scripture in Psalm, he said, no good thing will I withhold from you. Because while you're walking up brightly, God will bless his seed, his children. God will bless you as you bless him and live for him every day. He says, therefore, take no thought of tomorrow. He said, preach, it's hard not to do that. He said, I'm going to take care of it, trust me. The church, he says many times, uh, trust him. When Jesus got his disciples, he got all his disciples, he says, hey, just come and follow me. What about the nets? They dropped the nets, didn't they? They dropped them. They weren't worried about that, you know. But my business, somebody gonna take my nets. I oh, don't worry about that. Just come on. Just follow me. I'm on, I got you for the next 
years ahead for the rest of your life. And their lives would change because they followed God. They didn't worry about tomorrow. They said, all right, it's a new end day in Christ. And you know, for tomorrow, shall take no thoughts of the things of itself sufficient unto their view. And whatever comes our way, wherever the disciples face with Jesus, no doubt they were ready because they were with Jesus. Evils can come, but you're with Jesus. Things will come and try to overwhelm you, but with, with, with Christ, there's nothing that's too hard. There will be things that come around the corner. Naturally, we're all going to face things in our lives, even maybe even greater than what we faced before. But you know what? Jesus holds the future. In church, as we, as we close with that, the Bible says things present or things to come. Don't let it separate you from Christ. Don't let it separate you from the love of God. God loves each of us. He cares about our future. He cares about our next move, our next steps. He cares about us, church. Things to come make sure it's in Christ. Bible says today because then he will help you conquer the future. You want to conquer? Don't be afraid of the future. We look forward to what God's going to do in Christ. We look forward to victory in Jesus. There's victory in Christ. I mean, know that. There is victory in Jesus. The future is bright for the believer. My friend, they come on board. Come on and board and give your life to Christ tonight. As we bow heads in reverence to God tonight, get on board with Jesus tonight. There's victory in your future as you serve Christ. There's victory in your marriage. There's victory in the days ahead, in your careers, in your choices in life. There's victory down the road as so we follow Jesus in life. He said, just follow me. Follow me. Follow me. I'll, I'll cause you to conquer. I'll help you through all the things and the challenges that this life will bring. Don't worry about it. God's got you in his hand. Talking about complete victory, brothers and sisters. Even our future. Our future. We got victory over the past. Thank God for that. How's my past forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ tonight? My future, my, my past is forgiven. And my friend today, if you're not saved now, your past can be for, forgiven tonight because you believe what he did on the cross for you and I. He shed his blood on the old rugged cross. He was crucified and pierced and, and no doubt died and gave up the ghost for us that we can be saved tonight. And all of this because he was looking into the future, thinking about things to come. There was going to be some people here on 334 Ashford Street there was going to be some people watching online, hearing this video, hearing this broadcast. He was concerned about our future. Amen. Aren't you glad tonight he cares about your future? In church tonight, you can have victory through the salvation of Jesus Christ. Give him your life tonight and believe him as Lord and Savior. Tonight, ask him into your heart tonight. Ask the Lord for help. Ask him for strength. Ask him for forgiveness tonight. Repent of your sins, my friend, today, and turn, put bygones back on, and get saved. Give your life over to Christ and let him take over your life and your days ahead. Don't go alone tonight. Your present, he'll take care of, and your future. Things present or things to come, my friend. The future is bright in Christ. My friend, today, not only that, but not only salvation, but get filled with the Holy Ghost as well. We need the Holy Ghost in the days ahead. I may say that. Do not go another day without getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Tonight, tonight, to get filled with the Holy Ghost, say, God, I want the Holy Ghost. Wherever you may be tonight, you can lift up those hands and say, Lord, I want the Holy Ghost. Wherever you may be, God can feel you in a moment of time. Whether the hands are lifted or not, God can feel you if you want the Holy Ghost. The Bible said they were all sitting in one accord. God filled them with the Holy Ghost. God will lay your hands on folks and they will fill with the Holy Ghost. God wants you to have the Holy Ghost for the future. He, he, the church had to have the Holy Ghost in order to go forward. Because if they didn't, they was going to crumble. It, we wouldn't even be here today if they didn't have the Holy Ghost. There's power, victorious power in Christ. You don't go another day without the Holy Spirit tonight. Amen. You can go and live a victorious life in Christ Jesus. Let's all find a place to pray. She begin to sing us unto the Lord tonight. Amen. The future. Things to come. Include God. Serve God. Trust God. Believe God for what he said he would do. God bless you. Let's find a place to pray tonight. Let's pray for the lost. Pray for people that we don't even know now. Pray for those men on those streets, the men on the streets bowed, that their future would change as we interact and we meet men and women. It's like God puts you in people's paths to help change someone's future through Jesus Christ. Call on the Lord. Call on Him. Let's intercede for the world. 
Intercede for a world full of iniquity. Intercede for a world that's bound by the enemy. A world is destined for hell. But Jesus can reach down and save one more. Jesus and I can reach down to save the lost. Jesus reached down, touch this community one more time. Touch families one more time. Change a nation, a world that needs Jesus. You're the God of the future. You're still the light of the world. Lord, we bless your name. God, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen.
Amen. And whatever comes our way, go in victory. We win. We win in Christ. We win in Jesus. We can have victory in Him. Also prepared us to say, hey, things will come our way. Things will come your way. Can't get away from it. Amen. But you know what He tells us? We can win in Christ Jesus. We thank God for Him building a victorious church. She to pray for people. Pray for those that are struggling, that are being defeated by the enemy. Let's put that on our prayer list. Those that are defeated by the enemy, we pray that they'll find victory through Christ Jesus. Amen. To find victory in Christ Jesus, as I mentioned before, pray for those men in the Bronx. Pray for me as I'm going to see them tomorrow. And no doubt, we'll perhaps try to witness to some of them. Witness to some of them is so, so sad to see. It's almost like, like I was saying, the devil's rubbing his face right there. Right there in front of the jailhouse uh, of lawlessness and iniquity. But there's a God in heaven. Amen. There's a God in heaven. They can clean up that bar. I was like, man, it's right there on St. Anne's and 149th in the Bronx. I said, man, God, we can have a church up here. God, we need a church up here, God. In the Bronx, God, we pray. Church in Queens, God. Church in Manhattan. Church in Staten Island. Churches throughout the city, Brooklyn, all throughout there, not just one either. But we need no doubt to pray that the gospel message will go forth. Pray for those true men of God that will preach and teach the word of God, or true women of God that are preaching and teaching the word of God. And wherever God places them in this city, that we can impact it. Amen. And soldiers for Christ. God bless you, I pray. Amen. I know we go along. Amen. Reverend Johnson, we dismiss that prayer.